Hello, I'm Kirk with AEG and I'm going to show you how to play Let's Go to Japan, a card game for one to four players where you are travelers competing to plan and experience the most personally fulfilling dream vacation in Tokyo and Kyoto. The game consists of 13 rounds in which players draw activity cards and strategically place them on different days in their week-long itinerary, followed by a final round where they ultimately go on their plan trip, activating each of their cards along the way. The player who collects the most points by the end of their trip is the winner. Note that the game I'm using is a prototype and the final production copy will have art and color changes. I'm going to start with game setup, but if you want to skip to the how to play section, use the chapter links in the description below. Let's start with setting up the game. Each player takes one player board and six favorable condition tokens. Choose one player to randomize their six tokens, and they will place one on each day. The other players will match the same tokens to the same days on their own player board, so everyone has the same setup. Next, each player places five experience tokens on the left most zero space on their experience track. Each player takes the mood tracker token in their player color and places them into the center of their mood track, followed by the stress token on the leftmost red space and the happiness token on the leftmost green space. Finally, give each player a starting train token, which will sit off to the side of their board until needed. Shuffle the deck of blue activity cards marked Tokyo on the backs and place them in the center of the play area. Then do the same for the pink activity cards marked Kyoto. Leave space between them for a shared discard pile. Now place the round tracker board in the central play area with the round tracker token on the first leftmost circular space so as not to cover the little TK icon. Make accessible piles of the wild tokens, train tokens, research tokens, walk tokens, and 12 plus tokens in the central area for everyone to use. Now let's talk about the anatomy of a card. The backs of the cards contain the information needed for using the card as a walk, which I will explain later. The top left of each card will contain the experience and mood icons. These indicate which experience and mood track icons will be moved when the card is activated at the end of the game. The points each card is worth is at the top right. The activity name and description are above and below the picture. Each card has a highlight of the day bonus at the bottom. The left side indicates what is needed to earn the card's bonus points, which are shown on the right side. I will cover more on how to choose your featured activity each day and how to score them later. There are five types of experience icons. There is a green food and drink icon, a red temples and shrines icon, an orange shopping and goods icon, a pink nature and gardens icon, and finally a blue unique experiences icon. There are also mood icons, which will move the mood tracker on your player boards when activated. Green happiness icons will always move the mood tracker towards happiness, representing ways you saved money or relaxed and gained energy for your trip. The red stress icons will move your mood tracker towards stress, representing spending too much money or highly strenuous activity that will drain your energy. Some cards will have multiple experience and mood icons, moving all of those tokens on your experience track and mood tracker when the card is activated at the end of the game. During the game, you'll place three cards into each day on your itinerary, and one of those cards will be on top. Only that top card will score the highlight of the day bonus if the requirement is met. For example, this card requires that you have visited two temples or shrines before this tea ceremony card is activated. If you have met the requirement, you will gain six bonus points and a bonus unique experience icon. This next card requires you to have two shopping and two temple icons up to the day this card is activated to earn eight bonus points. Note that the temple icon on the top of this card will count towards this requirement. There are other cards like this one that require you to have ridden two trains up to the point this card is activated. They can be before this day or even on this day to count. Some bonus points will have a variable like this one that earns you 4 points plus 1 additional point for every food icon you have on your experience tracker up to this day. Note that any food icons you earn after this day will not count. This card will earn you 2 bonus points for every unique pair of shopping and food icons. And finally, both decks will contain activity cards that are yellow and do not say Tokyo or Kyoto on the picture. This means that they can be counted as either a Tokyo or Kyoto card. This will become important in planning your trip, as when your activity cards go from one city to another in your itinerary, you will need to add a train token to travel between the two cities. These yellow cards give you flexibility in your draft selection. Next, let's talk about the round order. Rounds are played simultaneously, during which players will draw cards, play cards of their itinerary and check for any day bonus rewards, and then pass the remaining cards in hand to the next player. At the beginning of each round, players will draw activity cards to their hand as indicated by the round tracker. Then they will play one or two cards, also as indicated by the round tracker, to their itinerary. Let's take a moment to talk about the round tracker and how it indicates what players should do each round. In rounds 1 through 4, this TK icon indicates that players will each draw one blue Tokyo card and one pink Kyoto card to their hand. During the first four rounds, players will play one of those cards and pass the other one to the player on their left. Note that all cards passed for the first seven rounds will be passed to the left, and beginning with the eighth round, direction will switch and all cards will be passed to the right, as indicated by the circular arrow icon. Note that the cards you pass should be passed face down. In rounds five, seven, and nine, players will pick up the four cards that were passed to them from this spot on their player board. In rounds six and eight, players will draw two Tokyo cards and two Kyoto cards from the decks. 
During these middle rounds, players will play two cards and pass two cards. In the final four rounds, players will go back to playing one card and passing one card. In rounds 10 and 12, this icon indicates that players will pick up the two cards that were passed to them. In the final round, players will first draw one card of their choice from the Tokyo or Kyoto deck, and then pick up the card that was passed to them. Players are not allowed to look at that card before deciding which deck to draw from. To play a card, simply pick one from your hand and place it into any day on your itinerary. When placing a card into a day where there are already cards, you can place it on the bottom, in the middle, or on top of the stack any way you like, but you cannot move any cards once they are placed, so choose carefully. Here are a few things to consider while placing. Each day has a randomly placed favorable condition token, so you may want to place cards that have icons at the top matching those favorable condition icons to earn day bonuses, which I'll describe later. But remember, you are not required to make these matches. You can place any card under any day you want. While going through your itinerary left to right, top to bottom, you will need to add train tokens before scoring to travel between activities in Tokyo and Kyoto. So you may want to group light cards together if you want to take fewer trains, or not, in the case that you want to add a bunch of train tokens throughout the week. And finally, the top card on the stack of any day will be your highlight of the day bonus. You'll want to make sure that it's a card with the requirements that you can meet by the day that it is activated. Remember that only cards played before it on earlier days and the day it is played will have their symbols count towards it. If you ever have a card in hand that just won't fit into your schedule for any reason, you can choose to take a walk and leave it to fate what activity you'll find. Simply discard the card you don't want and take one card from either deck without looking at it and place it face down in the time slot. The deck you draw from does not have to be the same as the card you discarded. Whenever you take a walk this way, you will earn one research token, which can be spent in a later round to look at more cards to draft from, or if it's not spent, will be worth one point at the end of the game. To spend a research token, after you have drawn the indicated number of cards for the round, but before you pass any cards, just discard the token back to the supply to draw three cards in any combination from the Tokyo and Kyoto decks to your hand. Then you must immediately discard any three cards from your hand to the face-up discard pile in the center of the play area. You may use more than one research token in a single round, as long as you can complete the draw three cards and discard three cards for each token separately. Whenever you place your third card for the day, check to see if you have earned a day bonus. On the three cards you place for the day, if you only have one icon matching the favorable condition token, you may move the mood tracker icon one space to the right. If you have two icons on the day that match the favorable condition token, you may choose to earn two research tokens or one wild token right now. The wild token can be spent when you go on your trip to move any one of the five experience tokens forward one space on the experience track. If you have three or more icons on the day that match the favorable condition token, you may choose to take a luxury terrain token or go on an extra walk by adding a face down card to that day. This is how you can get a fourth card placed on the day. Note that you do not get a research token for taking an extra walk. You can always take a lesser bonus if you want to. For example, a player that has matched three icons may take the bonus for two icons or one icon instead. At the end of the 13th round, when everyone has placed their last card and resolved their day bonuses, planning is finally complete and players are ready to go on their trip and add up their scores. The last card in everyone's hand is discarded instead of passed to the next player. At this point, players should place the necessary train tokens for traveling between Tokyo and Kyoto. Remember that trains are needed anytime you switch from Tokyo to Kyoto and vice versa, even between two different days. In this example, I'm placing my starting train token and the luxury train token that I earned as a day bonus first. The luxury chain tokens will earn one happiness energy icon on the day that you activate them. So place them strategically to help you regulate your mood or to count for highlight of the day requirements where needed. Note that if you have enough luxury train tokens to cover all your in-between city trips, you do not have to place your starting train token if you don't want to. Also know that any unused luxury train tokens at the end of the game are worth zero points. Any between city trips not covered by luxury or starting train tokens will need regular train tokens placed as needed to complete their itinerary. These trains will be worth minus two points when scored. In turn order, each player activates their Monday card starting from top to bottom. I like to roleplay my day, naming the card activities first, then moving the experience and mood tokens as shown on the cards. In this example, my day started with an extra walk earned as my Monday day bonus. When activating walks, you get to turn it over and choose whether you want to place that card back with its activity side up, or walk on by and keep it face down as a walk. The choice is always yours. Here, the shopping symbol and extra points were advantageous, so I chose to keep it face up. Sometimes a card may have icons that hurt a future highlight of the day bonus, so you want to walk on by. To remember that this card was a walk, I'm placing a walk token on it. Next, I'll count how many symbols I've earned and move the corresponding experience tokens that many spaces on the experience track. To see if I can score the highlight of the day bonus, I'm comparing it to the experience tracker to see if I have enough shopping icons, which I do, so I will add the seven bonus points to the points shown on the top of all the cards for Monday. I scored 21 points. From here, we can go around the table and score each player's Monday in the same way before moving on to Tuesday. 
One scoring Tuesday, I have a walk as my top card, so I get to flip it over and decide if I want to keep the activity face up or walk on by. If I walk on by and leave it as a walk, I will score the two points on the bottom of the card as the highlight of my day. I'm going to keep it on the activity side and activate all my cards. I get to move the nature token one space, the shopping token one more space, and the temple token one space as well. I have two green happiness icons, so I get to move my mood tracker two spaces to the right. One of those moves pushed my mood icon to the green end of the track. I get to move my happiness token one space to the right, and then I reset the mood tracker to the middle before moving it the second time. Let's stop to check out how the mood tracker works. As you activate your cards, all green and red arrow icons will move the mood tracker left and right. When it hits either end, stop and move the happiness or stress token to the right one space, and then reset the mood tracker token back to the middle. The happiness and stress tokens will never move left on their own tracks. When you are all done scoring your days, and each player is ready to score their moods on the score sheet, they will score positive points equal to where their happiness token is, and negative points equal to where their stress token is. Looking at the highlight of the day activity on my top card, I see that I need two nature icons to score the bonus. Since I only have one at this point, I will discard one of my wild tokens to move the nature experience token up one space on the track, giving me the two that I need to score the bonus. After everyone has scored all six of their days this way, each player will now record how many points they have scored on their mood tracker. Then they will earn points for how far each of their experience tokens made it up the experience track. Here, I have two tokens that made it to 12 points each, and three tokens that made it to 4 points each, for a total of 36 points. Next, I will calculate the positive and negative points from the trains and record them. And finally, if I have any unspent research tokens, each one will earn one point. The player with the most points has fulfilled their individual goals for the trip the best and is the winner. If you want a tiebreaker, each player can add up the total number of spaces each of their five experience tokens has moved up, and the player with the higher total is the winner. If there is still a tie, everyone must agree that their trips were equally impressive. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoy playing Let's Go to Japan as much as we enjoyed making it.